morning and welcome back to the lecture series on performative gender and religions in South Asia. So, today's lecture is in continuation from our uh, previous lecture on classical dance forms. We have already discussed three classical dance forms uh, namely Mohiniyattam, Bharatnatyam and Kuchipuri. So, today we are going to look at two more dance forms uh, from the classical tradition. One is Kathak, the other is Manipuri. Let us take them up one by one. So, the word Kathak is derived from the Sanskrit word Kathaka. Kathaka referring to the storyteller and uh, it also traces back uh, its uh, roots to the Vedic uh, Sanskrit word Katha which means story. So, uh, Kathak uh, represents a story and a storyteller. The term Kathak represents uh, the dancer as well as the dance form. This dance form is originally from Uttar Pradesh and it is mostly practiced in India and Pakistan. So, this dance form is deeply rooted in the Hindu religion uh, and uh, it would be uh, practiced uh, in its provenance in, in the earlier times it would be practiced and performed in the temples, right. At the same time we also see that uh, the nomadic performers that arrived from uh, Muslim majority countries such as Afghanistan, Turkey and Iran uh, in the 8th century have enormously and very significantly contributed to the growth and development of this classical form. So, Kathak marked its arrival with the performances that were enacted on the streets, in uh, royal courts, in the palaces of the Rajputs and later on at the courts of the Mughal rulers uh, 11th century onward. So, Kathak is found in three uh, distinct forms or gharanas. Gharanas, uh, the word gharana could be translated uh, best as schools. So, there are uh, three uh, schools of uh, Kathak performance or Kathak tradition in uh, the Indic context. Uh, namely after the three different cities where the Kathak uh, dance tradition evolved. So, one is the Jaipuri Gharana uh, that evolved in Jaipur, then the Banarasi Gharana that uh, evolved in Banaras and finally, the Lucknowi Gharana that uh, evolved in Lucknow, right. While the Jaipur Gharana focuses more on the foot movements, exquisite and very detailed foot movements. We see that in the case of Banaras and Lucknow gharanas, the focus is more on the uh, facial expressions, the dancers facial expressions and the graceful hand movements or mudras. So, Kathak uh, mixes uh, very skillful dexterous footwork, very swift uh, footwork, hand movements and uh, flexible spins with uh, mukhabhinaya, mukhabhinaya or pantomime as well as very subtle delicate gestures. The language of uh, its movement and its repertoire reflect a, a syncretic uh, origin or syncretic roots, multiple roots, roots that trace back both to the Hindu and the uh, Muslim traditions, the Indian Muslim tradition. So, it is a dance form practiced both by the males and the females and it carries uh, the knowledge system, the taste that have been contributed both by the Hindu and the Muslim traditions. So, it can be uh, uh, a practice that is narrating a devotional topic, a topic based on bhakti for example or, or something dedicated to, a topic dedicated to gods and goddesses. Uh, and conversely it could also be meant for uh, light entertainment, right. So, Kathak was first performed as a temple dance uh, by a group of Brahmin storytellers or Kathaks uh, who performed uh, the Hindu epics and mythologies using expressive gestures. The performance itself consists of a number of dance pieces uh, which uh, include pantomime, uh, improvisation, 
discussion uh, in accompaniment of music as well as a certain uh, a predefined or encoded compositions. So, the performance uh, of Kathak starts out uh, slowly in the beginning which is called the Vilambit Le, Le is basically the tempo right, the speed. So, uh, initially it is the uh, Vilambit Le uh, or it starts out slowly and then it picks up uh, speed and energy as it progresses. Uh, the tempo eventually doubles from Vilambit it becomes Madhya Le, so the medium pace or medium tempo and uh, then it quadruples. So, the rapid speed which is known as the Drutle. All Hindustani vocal, instrumental and singing performances in fact exhibit this kind of pace progression from uh, Vilambit to Madhyam and then to uh, Drut, right. Uh, the, the solo performance structure combines certain set forms uh, or, or uh, encoded forms like Gat and a Tuba that are pre-composed uh, alongside uh, you know variation of forms like, like Peshkar, Kaida and Rela which uh, involves spontaneity or uh, improvisation. So, there are two things, one is uh, some preset uh, you know uh, uh, performance structures and then some that are uh, you know uh, designed on stage by the artist. This happens with a lot of training, uh, it entails a lot of skill to uh, prepare uh, a design on the stage on spot. So, it is a kind of uh, very lively, very uh, spontaneous uh, interaction with the audience that is going on, right. So, most Kathak uh, performances include uh, at least one piece of Abhinay which uh, entails uh, expressive gestures and a pantomime or Mukabhinay which explains uh, song lyrics uh, and these song lyrics are usually uh, based on some well known stories plot. Next we see that since the new Indian middle classes and government took over the dance patronage and this is uh, in the early 20th century in the 1930s uh, to 1950s uh, decade we could say that the first half of the 20th century. Uh, we see um, that with the middle class taste being uh, incorporated and the government uh, taking over the, uh, the, the, the dance patronage, uh, Kathak becomes more standardized, more sophisticated, uh, religious in nature and the erotic uh, content or elements are uh, duly expunged. So, the contemporary repertoire extensively uses uh, Hindu mythology and love songs uh, that are interpreted in the context of devotionalism or the bhakti tradition. Specific dance technique uh, which include the exquisite footwork and uh, rhythmical variations, uh, a number of pirouettes or, or uh, you know uh, circular movements, swirling, uh, graceful uh, postures, then subtle expressions costumes as well as the uh, accompanying Hindustani classical music, all of these uh, together make a uh, part and parcel of the Kathak uh, tradition or we could say the narrative that Kathak is trying to etch through its performance, etch out through its performance. Uh, however, these norms are sometimes de deliberately reworked uh, and uh, you know kind of uh, shuffled in different uh, innovations and experimentations which are classified as contemporary Kathak. So, contemporary Kathak as one can uh, surmise does not stick to the, uh, the, the uh, classical rules, sometimes it uh, experiments and reworks these um, uh, time worn rules, right, trying to make uh, the, the dance form a little more contemporary, little more modern. So, here we see a Kathak performance. The coordination is very important, the coordination, the hand and uh, leg movements, uh, the way the two dancers are moving almost uh, together, uh, 
we see that the leg movements are very straight, the legs are never bent unlike uh, in the case of uh, Bharatanatyam, Mohiniyattam, Kuchipuri, all of them uh, require bending the legs, but here the legs are straight, right. Uh, the, the focus is on the hand mudras, the facial expressions, right. Uh, and they are trying to tell a story through these movements, uh, very graceful movements indeed. Uh, the two dancers are uh, almost uh, narrating a story on stage, right? They are narrating a story on stage. And uh, the importance of tal, the importance of lay, the importance of, uh, you know, the raga, the music, all of these uh, come to play very important roles in uh, Kathak dance form. So, coming to the attire, the, the dressing in the Kathak tradition, the female dancers of Kathak wear a, a long pleated kurta or, or top which is worn over a, a pajama. Uh, they also wear a brocade cap and a dupatta. Uh, sometimes sari can also be worn by a Kathak performer as a part of the traditional Hindu attire and this uh, enables, you know, uh, uh, more movements when dancing. So, when some, uh, one is wearing a sari while dancing Kathak, they can probably uh, perform more movements. We see that uh, at the Kathak attire can also consist of uh, a lehenga and a choli with uh, uh, an optional veil or ordni. So, Choli is basically a fitted uh, blouse that goes with the flowy lehenga. Lehenga is a uh, ankle length uh, skirt, right? So, uh, both of these uh, uh, garments, the, the choli and the lehenga can be embellished or embroidered and the feet of the dancer is adorned with uh, 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 small bells that are attached to a belt. This is called the ghungru. Uh, in Indian tradition, all dance forms almost uh, require the dancer to wear this uh, leather belt uh, on which uh, small bells are uh, embedded. This is called ghungru and uh, then uh, wearing this ghungru uh, facilitates the movements uh, which are harmonized to the uh, accompanying music. So, the lehenga is occasionally modified to a unique dance style and so the Kathak lehenga or this long flowing skirt uh, puffs out uh, while uh, swirling. The dancers of the Mughal era uh, covered their body with an angrakha uh, which had evolved originally from the Persian uh, cape called uh, Balaba or Chapkan. And uh, it was introduced to the Indian culture sometime around the late medieval or early modern era. So, from this uh, tradition or this culture of wearing chapkan came this garment called uh, angarakha, and the Kathak dancers would uh, commonly wear it on the torso, on the upper part of their body. Its uh, Sanskrit name is angarakshaka, meaning the body keeper, right. So, the male dancers of Kathak typically dress in bare chested outfits. Uh, the, the male Kathak dancer either dons a long uh, shirt over pajamas or a dhoti and a kurta. The outfit is made of a lightweight uh, material uh, which is typically silk. Uh, the Mughal attire resembles uh, kurta churidar, right? The attire is completed with a peaked cap. Now, there are two primary aspects of uh, any Indian classical dance form and in the same way, uh, in the case of Kathak also we see these two aspects. One is the Nritta, the other is Nritya. Uh, let us please note and make sure that we do not confuse the two. They sound very similar, but they are not quite the same. Nritta and Nritya. Nritya refers to technical aspect whereas Nritya refers to the expressional aspect, right. These two uh, constitute the primary aspects uh, of Kathak. So, Nritya focuses on Tal uh, or, or the rhythmic cycle and the lay or the tempo 
whereas nritya focuses on the abhinaya part and so it employs the uh, the the bodily gestures uh, the the sound and visuals right the the drama that is uh, involved in the dance form is nritya whereas the technical part is the nritya with tal and le so nritya employs musical genres and uh, within nritya we include thumri kafi bhajan ghazal and so on the legs and the torso of the kathak dancer are generally straight i was talking about this a while back and so a story is uh, told through a developed vocabulary which is based on the gestures of arms and upper body movements facial expressions neck movements eyes and eyebrow movements so kathak as a performance art has survived and thrived uh, as an oral tradition and it has been innovated and uh, taught or rather passed down from one generation to another verbally and also through practice right kathak has adapted and integrated with the tastes of the contemporary regime so it has uh, for example uh, assimilated the tastes of the mughal courts uh, during the 16th and uh, 17th centuries and it was uh, particularly patronized by akbar however it stagnated and went into a decline during the british colonial era the women dancers of kathak who graced the courts of a northern and eastern india uh, became popularly known as the notch girls the notch dancers during the british rule so this is also around the time when we see that the tawaif tradition associated with uh, you know this kathak dance form where the dancing women were highly skilled highly knowledgeable and trained uh, they would uh, make public uh, performances from there uh, you know uh, during the british era there is a decline and uh, the tawaifs are being merely reduced to flesh traders and uh, prostitutes which they were not they were something much more than that they were very uh, knowledgeable and uh, very highly accomplished uh, ladies so we see that the entire tawaif tradition during the british rule is uh, declining uh, in terms of values and in terms of the male gaze that it incurs kathak has uh, inspired uh, simplified uh, regional variants such as the bhavai the bhavai form uh, Uh, which is uh, a form of rural theater focusing on the tales of hindu goddesses or shakti and it emerged in the medieval era and it would be practiced in uh, states uh, like gujarat rajasthan and uh, madhya pradesh another variant that uh, emerged from ancient kathak is thumri and uh, thumri was uh, afterwards developed uh, by the tawaif community who were called the notch dancers by the british like i already said so kathak uh, as a form was reborn it was uh, rejuvenated uh, in india's post independence era and uh, it uh, sought to rediscover its ancient roots and a sense of national identity through the performance arts so uh, in the post independence era some of the famous kathak dancers are pandit birju maharaj shobhana narayan shambhu maharaj sitara devi durga lal sundar prasad and uh, others from here we will move on to our next uh, classical dance form which is manipuri so manipuri is one of the primary classical dance forms in india and it evolved in the state of manipur which is located in the northeastern part of india so the dances of uh, shiva and parvati as well as other gods and goddesses who created the universe are connected to the ritual and traditional festivities in manipur there are many different styles of manipuri dance uh, but the ras sankirtan and uh, thangta are the most uh, well known uh, styles radha 
Krishna and the gopis uh, are the major protagonists of the Manipuri Ras. The gopis as well as Radha's feelings of longing and separation from Lord Krishna uh, are frequently portrayed through the themes of Manipuri dance. So, it uh, forms a central or a major theme in uh, Manipuri uh, dance form. The dance in uh, Manipur is referred to as Sankirtan and it is accompanied by the Kirtan style of communal singing. While dancing, the men dancers or the male dancers play the Pung and the Kartal. The Sankirtan heritage uh, includes the Cholams, uh, which is a type of manly dance. Uh, at all social and religious holidays, the Pung and Kartal Cholams uh, are commonly performed. The Thangta or uh, Manipur's uh, martial dancers have their roots uh, in the ancient times when uh, humans uh, capability of uh, defending themselves against the uh, wild creatures was uh, considered as crucial to their survival. It was a survival skill and from there the, the Thangta performance uh, has been derived. So, the dancers in Manipur's modern martial dance forms uh, generally use swords, uh, spears and shields as a part of their uh, complex and uh, developed repertory. The real uh, battle scenes between uh, dancers demonstrate their very skillful training and their bodily control and flexibility. So, there are two forms or we could say two bhavas that are uh, used uh, primarily in Manipuri dance. So, primarily there are two uh, bhavas or two forms uh, used in Manipuri dance. One is the Tandav, the other is Lasya. Uh, so, the Tandav refers to the most ferocious masculine and the Lasya refers to the quiet and elegant feminine. The range is uh, quite uh, uh, spread out or quite uh, wide and broad we can see. Uh, the range is from the most ferocious masculine to the quiet and elegant feminine. The Manipuri dance is distinctive and unique in that it emphasizes devotion rather than entertainment and pleasure. The faces of the dancers are generally obscured by a thin uh, veil, usually it is a white uh, gossamer veil and the hand gestures and subtle foot movements are more important than the facial expression because the face is partially shrouded. Right. The Tandav dance which emphasizes rhythm and motion very you know lively and vigorous motions comprises the male aspects of dancing. So, it can be identified by its angular very sharp and animated movements that attempt at capturing the spirit of the underlying uh, bhava. On the other hand the Lasya elements are depicted through soft flowing movements that seem to blend into one another in a very pretty uh, blur uh, without uh, showing geometric or sharp edges and they uh, are performed, the Lasya elements are performed usually by the female dancers. Uh, the Lasya elements represent dancing as a feminine art form. So, women typically wear long distinctive skirts, the skirts have a specific shape right the skirts are not flowy they are stiff and circular right they do not give away the human contour of the dancer right so the skirts are usually stiff they are circular they are not flowy and uh, uh, they do not give away the contour of the dancer and uh, the focus of the dance is mainly on uh, elegant hand and knee movements so, we see that uh, Rabindranath Tagore had encouraged the dissemination of Manipuri dance by bringing Guru Atumba Singh who was a native of Imphal in Manipur to the uh, cultural educational community that he had built uh, in Bengal 
it is called Shanti Niketan. And so, Guru Atomba Singh was invited there as a teacher of Manipuri dance and this was around the beginning of the 21st century. Manipuri dance thereafter made its debut on the Indian urban cultural scene and Tagore believed that uh, these approaches were best suited for imaginative dance drama. So, he has deployed uh, the Manipuri dance form for a number of uh, dance dramas that he has composed, especially uh, Bhanu Singh Padavali comes to mind. Uh, and this is because uh, of uh, the emphasis uh, on Lasya in style and Tandava in terms of quality. He, he finds it very interesting how Manipuri as a dance form is uh, uh, bringing together these two very contrary uh, bhavas, uh, Lasya which is the languid feminine and Tandava which is the fierce uh, fighting. So, he deploys a uh, Manipuri dance form to uh, illustrate uh, the dance drama compositions that he makes. So, Urubhanga or Broken Thighs is a legendary drama by Bhasa which uh, was presented to a great acclaim by a young director from Manipur uh, on the northeastern border named uh, Ratanthiyam. So, Ratanthiyam became very famous after his uh, rendition of Urubhanga through the Manipuri dance form. This drama was remarkably translated into uh, Manipuri by him. The female Manipuri dancers generally don veils and a gossamer white traditional garment. So, the bodies of the female dancers in Manipuri dance form emulate the different aspects of nature. They are very soft, elegant movements and um, they remind us of a creeper, an ivy creeper uh, moving gently in mild breeze. Renowned Indian uh, writer and critic Mulkraj Anand in his editorial piece for a special issue of the journal Marg uh, highlights how Manipuri uh, dance form has remained on the borderline of the Indian classical and the Indian folk. So, Mulkaraj Anand points out that in spite of the high order of the classical Manipuri style, its subtleties and intricacies of coordination of the uh, hand mudras, the footwork and the abhinay, there is also an element of ecstasy which, which uh, reminds us, which uh, evokes a uh, folklorist tradition or folk style, right? So, the borderline between the classical and the folk therefore remains uncannily close and blurred. The vital folk movements impa impart a peculiar uh, intimacy to this style rather than detracting it from the beauty or grace of the uh, classical Manipuri style. So, this is to say that the folklorist elements that are present in Manipuri dance form does not make it less beautiful and less graceful. Rather, the form becomes something unique, uh, which is uh, one of its kind in the Indic tradition, where both the folk and the classical elements uh, mix and, uh, and, and blend uh, to form something very peculiar, right? And so, this is a video of the Manipuri dance form where the dancers are making very circular movements uh, and the movements are very controlled, uh, moving in half circles, right? And we have to remember, like I have already stated, Manipuri as a dance uh, form is mainly, uh, you know, referring to the bhakti tradition. It's at, at its heart, we have uh, elements of devotion uh, rather than entertainment. With this, I am going to stop my lecture here today. Thank you.